Charmaine here and today we will be talking about typewriters. If you follow me on Instagram, you would know that I have experience with three typewriters, three different models. And this marathon one that you see on screen is the one that I acquired most recently. And today we will be discussing everything about typewriters. In this video, we will be answering three questions. Should you buy a typewriter? Do you need a typewriter? Where to buy a typewriter? And any other concerns that you should consider before purchasing your first typewriter. Number two, we will be talking about how to use a typewriter. We're not going to go really into the mechanical system of it, just the basic points that you will need to actually use the typewriter and get it to run and just make it do the basic stuff. And lastly, we are going to discuss about maintenance and how to love your typewriter some more. Before we jump right into the rest of the video, may I invite you to click subscribe, turn on notifications, and give this video a thumbs up. So let's answer the first question, which is, should I buy a typewriter? Should you buy a typewriter? I personally think that you should establish a couple of things first before you consider purchasing your typewriter. So this is not an essential item, it is more of a luxury item for vintage and analog enthusiasts like myself. 90% of the time it is for display and the other 10 is when I find the time to use it and actually type letters or type stuff on it. In my experience, my typewriters are more of a collection. So first, it is important to establish the purpose of why you're purchasing a typewriter. This will help you appreciate the purchase even more. Next, we answer the question, where do you buy your typewriter? The most important thing when purchasing typewriters is the location. Buy locally first because typewriters can tend to get super heavy and the shipping will be very costly. So you can check online. My first purchase was actually from gumtree.com.au. I purchased the Olivetti Laterra 22 from a person who lives in the greater Geelong area as well. But since I couldn't pick it up, the shipping was actually $30 and the typewriter itself was $89. You can also check your local vintage markets. My Olive Vatila Terra 32 I purchased from the amazing Mills Market also in Geelong. I purchased it for 79 Australian dollars and this unit has been rehomed with I am John Jay. The cheapest way to acquire a typewriter is to check with friends and a family who might have typewriters lying around in storage. This Marathon 2000 was gifted to me by Gay. She is my brother's girlfriend. Now we go to the third part and Arvin is gonna teach you how to use a typewriter. Hello everyone, this is the letter of 22 typewriter keyboard. Now for the past 15 minutes, I've been figuring out how to plug it into my keyboard. I can't seem to find a USB slot, so I just assume this is a wireless model. I've pressed the red button over there on the side, and that seems to have turned it on. Um, I've been typing away, and they don't seem to reflect on my notepad or Microsoft Word, but there is a handy mechanism at the top where you roll paper in, and it seems to copy what you type. It saves you from printing. Overall, it is an average keyboard. I wouldn't recommend it for your computer use. Anyway guys, kidding aside, I won't go into all the details. The typewriter has a lot of buttons and they have a different name for each one. But there is a manual for Letera 22 which you can find online and I'll put the link down below. But in terms of keys, when I got this unit, I was like, where's the number one? But because this is a portable typewriter, there is no number one because the small letter L is actually the number one as well. So again, for the specific names of each part and their functions, it is available in the PDF that I'll be linking in the description below. This part of the video is limited to changing the ribbon and feeding the typewriter with paper. So to change the ribbon or do maintenance, we have a detachable cover top 
according to the manual, to remove hold the cover firmly at the center and lift from the front. This gives access to the ribbon spools, to the type for cleaning purposes, and to the touch tuning device. Next, I am going to show you how to load the ribbon spools. So in terms of words, this is going to be a bit difficult to describe or to explain. So I'll let the visuals of this video do most of the talking. So I just load this spool. I usually just load the first one on one side first. And then there are like, there's a fork and then there's a spool. I mean, you can see it on screen. And I think it's also different for every typewriter, but for the Oliveira Latera 22, it has like a little spool, metal spool next to a fork, and you just run the ribbon through through there, and then you run the ribbon through the center, and then just do the same on the opposite side. It's a bit difficult to explain, especially as I'm not very much familiar with the exact words. If you want the specific words for these parts, they're also described in the manual as well. But hopefully this video helps you understand the whole concept of loading the spools on. And to close the unit back, I just attach the top cover and press it down as well. And there we go. Now we go to the next part where we load the paper. But before that, let me walk you through some of the parts that I think are important. So the control, the line spacing, you have this little knob on the upper left side and it says 0, 1, 2, and 3. Then we have the two buttons at the top so you can move them around. These are actually the margins they control up to where you are able to type and basically it controls you know that satisfying ding sound that a typewriter makes when it reaches the end these are the buttons that control where that ding happens next we have the carriage release lever so it moves the carriage towards the left and then we have the paper release lever so it allows you to put in two or three sheets at a time into the feed and just remember that when typing this lever must always be placed in the lock position next we have these hidden paper supports so you can rest the sheet of papers onto these two brackets that you have right here now we go to feeding paper into the typewriter so you press the paper release pull it out so that you can feed the paper through and then lock it back into position and just turn the knob turn it all the way through until paper shows up on the other side and then just put the paper underneath the bail rod to hold the paper firmly against the platen and from here you can just start typing also if you want to use the red or the black part of the ribbon you have this little knob right here which has three options you have the black the blank so basically doesn't bring the ribbon up and then the red one and then just type away as for the typing it takes a while it's not the same as using a regular keyboard more technical stuff just go back to the pdf i've put in below getting to know your typewriter is part of the fun now we go to the last part of this video is how to love your typewriter more so in terms of maintenance all the technical information for cleaning and maintenance is available on the pdf as well but the general cleaning maintenance says from time to time, you should have the typewriter thoroughly checked. This lengthens its life and keeps it in good working order. For such attention, you are advised to go either to an Olivetti agent or to some reliable typewriter maintenance firm. I am lucky enough that my dad has a contact to a person that does maintenance for typewriters. So my typewriters, they went 
through initial maintenance when I bought them. So one full thorough cleaning cost me around 1,200 pesos for each typewriter. But I was really amazed with it because it was in really good working order. Like it was so clean and so smooth. Everything was dust free. And I truly appreciate the effort because one of the letters around that time was chipped off. Like one of the letters had like a missing piece. It was scratched off, I think. And when I got my typewriter back, they actually put in white ink so that my typewriter was truly, truly brand new looking. So hopefully wherever you are, you have a reliable mechanic or typewriter maintenance team or company in your area. Just make sure that if you do not use your typewriter to keep it in the dust bag or in the case that it came in so that it just doesn't get any dusts in it because when dust gets into those tiny tiny corners, they're really most difficult to take out. And that's it. I think I answered all three questions for this typewriter talk. I hope you found this video informative and I hope it helps you decide on getting your own typewriter as well. Thank you so much for making it through till the end of this video. I will see you in the next one. But for now, keep safe and stay well.